In this lecture, we will discuss enols, enolates, and their formation and stability. First, let us understand what is alpha carbon. For compounds containing a carbonyl group, Greek letters are used to describe the proximity of each carbon atom to the carbonyl group. The carbonyl group itself does not receive a Greek letter. In this example, there are two carbon atoms designated as alpha positions. Hydrogen atoms are designated with the Greek letter of the carbon to which they are attached, for example, the hydrogen atoms, protons, connected to the alpha carbon atoms are called alpha protons. In the presence of catalytic acid or base, a ketone or an aldehyde will exist in equilibrium with an enol. The vast majority of the reactions depicted by carbonyl compounds, especially aldehydes and ketones, proceed via either an enol or an enolate intermediate. The ketone and enol shown here are tautomers, that is, rapidly interconverting constitutional isomers, that differ from each other in the placement of a proton and the position of a double bond. Do not confuse tautomers with resonance structures. The two structures are not resonance structures because they differ in the arrangement of their atoms. These structures represent two different compounds, both of which are present at equilibrium. In general, the position of equilibrium will significantly favor the ketone. For example, consider cyclohexanone. It exists in equilibrium with its tautomeric enol form, which exhibits a very minor presence. This is the case for most ketones. In some special cases, the enol tautomer is stabilized and exhibits a more substantial presence at equilibrium. Consider, for example, the enol form of a beta-diketone, such as 2,4-pentanedione. The equilibrium concentrations of the diketone and the enol depend on the solvent that is used, but the enol generally dominates. Two factors contribute to the remarkable stability of the enol in this case. One, the enol has a conjugated pi system, which is a stabilizing factor. Two, the enol can form an intramolecular hydrogen bonding interactions between the hydroxyl proton and the nearby carbonyl group. Both of these factors serve to stabilize the enol. Phenol is an extreme example in that the concentration of the ketone is practically negligible. In this case, the ketone lacks aromaticity, while the enol is aromatic and significantly more stable. Hence enol form, that is phenol, is more stable and exhibits substantial presence at equilibrium. This ketoenol tautomerization is catalyzed by trace amounts of either acid or base. In the acid catalyzed tautomerization, the carbonyl group is protonated at electron rich oxygen to form oxonium type ion. This is quickly stabilized by the weak carbonyl pi bond to form a cation intermediate. These two structures are said to be resonance structures. The cation intermediate is then deprotonated at alpha position to form an enol and regenerate the acid catalysts. Notice that all reagents and intermediates are either neutral or positively charged. That is, the mechanism does not exhibit any negative charges, which is consistent with acidic conditions. In base catalyzed tautomerization, the carbonyl compound is deprotonated at alpha position by a base to form a carbanion. This carbanion is quickly resonance stabilized to an enolate. The enolate is protonated at oxygen to form an enol and regenerate the basic catalyst. Thus, base catalyzed tautomerization of a carbonyl compound 
proceeds through enolate intermediate. Notice that all reagents and intermediates are either neutral or negatively charged. That is, the mechanism does not exhibit any positive charges in order to be consistent with basic conditions. The mechanisms for acid-catalyzed and base-catalyzed tautomerization involve the same two steps, protonation at the carbonyl group and deprotonation of the alpha position. The difference between these mechanisms is the order of events. In acid conditions, the first step is protonation of the carbonyl group, giving a positively charged intermediate. In basic conditions, the first step is deprotonation of the alpha position, giving a negatively charged intermediate. It is difficult to prevent tautomerization, even if care is taken to remove all acids and bases from the solution. Tautomerization can still be catalyzed by the trace amounts of acid or base that are adsorbed to the surface of the glassware, even after washing the glassware responsibly. Unless extremely rare conditions are employed, you should always assume that tautomerization will occur if possible, and an equilibrium will quickly be established favoring the more stable keto tautomer. The enol tautomer is generally present only in small amounts, but it is very reactive, specifically, the alpha position is very nucleophilic due to resonance. In the second resonance structure, the alpha position exhibits a lone pair, rendering that position nucleophilic. The effect of an OH group in activating the alpha position is similar to its effect in activating an aromatic ring. Let us draw the enol forms of the following ketones. Generally speaking, the keto tautomer is favored at equilibrium, mostly because the CO pi bond is about 20 kilocalories per mole, stronger than the CC pi bond. When treated with a strong base, the alpha position of an aldehyde or ketone is deprotonated to give a resonance stabilized intermediate, called an enolate. The reaction is reversible and equilibrium favors the starting materials by about 100 is to 1. The protons on the beta and gamma carbon are never removed. Therefore, these carbanions are never formed. The pKa value of alpha proton is 19 to 20. Means quite acidic than beta proton whose pKa value lies between 40 to 50. In fact, the acidity of the alpha hydrogen of carbonyl group is more than that of ethyne hydrogen, pKa 25, which is more than that of ethene, pKa 44, whereas that of ethane hydrogen is 50. This unusual acidity of alpha hydrogen of carbonyl compounds can be understood in terms of stability of conjugate base formed after deprotonation. More the stability of conjugate base, stronger will be the acid. That means acid will be deprotonated easily. The conjugate bases, which are negatively charged here, can be stabilized by inductive effect of adjacent electron withdrawing groups. Resonance delocalization of negative charge.
electronegativity of the atom bearing the negative charge. If we compare the deprotonation of alkane with that of an aldehyde or ketone at alpha carbon, we can see that, in the case of conjugate base of an alkane, negative charge is on carbon. Conjugate base of alkane doesn't have electron withdrawing groups to stabilize the negative charge. Delocalization of negative charge is not possible through resonance. Thus, conjugate base of an alkane is not stable, hence it is not acidic, and deprotonation by base cannot be achieved. Whereas in the case of conjugate base of aldehyde or ketone, negative charge is adjacent to electron withdrawing carbonyl group. Negative charge can be delocalized to the more electronegative oxygen atom through resonance or it is more stabilized. Thus, the conjugate base of an aldehyde or ketone is more stable, hence the alpha proton is quite acidic and can be deprotonated by base. Notice that resonance delocalization for carbanion at beta and gamma position is not possible hence these protons are not acidic. Therefore, in order for an enolate to form, there must be a hydrogen on the alpha carbon. If an aldehyde or ketone lacks a proton on the alpha carbon, we call it non-enolizable. Consider the following carbonyl compounds to see whether they are enolizable or non-enolizable. Alpha carbon has one hydrogen, it is enolizable. Alpha carbon doesn't have any hydrogen, it is non-enolizable. None of the alpha carbons have any hydrogen attached, it is non-enolizable. Alpha carbon has no hydrogen attached. It is non-enolizable. None of the alpha carbons have any hydrogen attached, it is non-enolizable. Enolates have two prominent resonance forms and can be drawn with a negative charge on carbon or a negative charge on oxygen. The later form is a major contributor towards resonance hybrid because negative charge is more stabilized on electronegative oxygen than on carbon. Electronegativity of oxygen is 3.5 versus 2.5 for carbon. Enolates are called ambident nucleophiles. Because they possess two nucleophilic sites, each of which can attack an electrophile. When the oxygen atom attacks an electrophile, it is called O attack. And when the alpha carbanion attacks an electrophile, it is called C attack. Although the oxygen atom of an enolate bears the majority of the negative charge, C attack is more common than O attack. Majority of the addition reactions depicted by aldehydes and ketones are examples of C attack. Even when drawing the mechanism of an enolate undergoing C attack, it is technically more appropriate to draw the resonance structure of the enolate in which the negative charge appears on the oxygen atom because that drawing represents the more significant resonance contributor. Therefore, more appropriate way to show C attack is like this given here. However, for simplicity, when drawing mechanisms, we often draw the less significant resonance contributor of the enolate in which the negative charge is on the alpha carbon. That is, for simplicity, the C attack is shown like this, in which less curved arrows are needed, which simplify many of the reaction mechanisms. Enolates are more useful than enols because enolates possess a full negative charge and are therefore more reactive than enols. Enolates can be isolated and stored for short periods of time, unlike enols, which cannot be isolated or stored. Thus, vast majority of the carbonyl reactions proceed through enolate intermediates.
Thus enolate itself is a great nucleophile and is very reactive with other electrophiles if they happen to be present, such as aldehydes or ketones, which gives us the aldol reaction. Halogens, which allows for example, bromination of the alpha carbon. Alkyl halides, which allows for formation of new CC bonds at the alpha carbon via alkylation. There are many modified aldol reactions that go by various names, like the Claisen condensation, Perkin condensation, Henry reaction, Novenagel condensation, and many more. They all boil down to the same essential thing, an enolate nucleophile attacking a carbonyl-carbon electrophile. Additional electron withdrawing groups make enolates more stable. This is obvious because any factor that stabilizes the conjugate base will increase the acidity. So it should become a much stronger acid since the negative charge of the resulting conjugate base is stabilized by an additional inductive effect and can be spread out over multiple oxygen atoms via resonance. The bottom line is that enolates that have two adjacent electron withdrawing groups are much easier to form. For example, compare the acidity of protons on central carbon of 1,3-diketone with that of an aldehyde or ketone. The protons on central carbon are more acidic than an aldehyde or ketone alpha protons. Two carbonyl groups better stabilize the negative charge via inductive effect than one. More importantly, two carbonyls allow the negative charge to be delocalized to a greater extent than by one carbonyl in an aldehyde or ketone. In case of aldehyde, the negative charge will be delocalized into one carbonyl only. Hence only two resonance forms. In case of ketone, delocalization of negative charge will be similar as in aldehyde, but due to additional electron donating alkyl group, it should be less acidic than aldehyde. This is obvious from their pKa values. Thus, enolates that have two adjacent electron withdrawing groups better stabilize the negative charge via inductive effect and resonance in case of carbonyl compared to aldehydes and ketones. However, if an atom with a lone pair of electron, pi donor, is attached to the carbonyl group, it will compete with alpha carbonion for electron donation into carbonyl group, making the conjugate base unstable, and hence, making the alpha proton less acidic. Thus among the amide, ester, and acid chloride. Nitrogen is best pi donor, followed by oxygen, and chlorine is worst pi donor. Therefore, we should expect amides to be less acidic than esters, but acid halides to be more acidic. Based on this reasoning, we can write the acidity of alpha hydrogens of various carbonyl compounds as A diketone is most acidic with pKa9 followed by nitromethane, pK10. Carbanion here is stabilized via conjugation into oxygens of nitro group. Beta ketoester, pK11, is slightly less acidic than diketone due to pi donation by ester oxygen. This is of course forward by diester, pK15, pi donation by two ester oxygens. Then comes aldehyde, pK17, slightly more acidic than ketone, pK19, due to one electron donating alkyl group in ketone. Acid chloride, pK16, is slightly more acidic than aldehyde. Due to electron withdrawing halogen being attached to carbonyl carbon compared to hydrogen in case of aldehyde, halogen is not a good pi donor. Ester has pK24, less acidic than ketone, due to pi donation by ester oxygen compared to only inductive effect in ketone by alkyl group. This is followed by nitriles, pKa25. 
Amlines, PK30, are least acidic, due to excellent pi donation by nitrogen. Remember, low PK means more acidic, and high PK means less acidic. Unsymmetrical ketones are capable of forming two different enolates, depending on which alpha carbon is deprotonated. Even though enolates react with electrophiles as carbanions, C attack, they are flat and can be thought of as similar to alkenes. And according to Zaitsev's rule, the more substituted the alkene, the more stable it is. This also applies to enolates. When two different enolates can be formed, the more substituted enolate tends to be more stable. Consider for example, this unsymmetrical ketone. Based on the deprotonation of orange or blue proton, two enolates can be formed. This left one has less substituted double bond and is therefore thermodynamically less stable. Whereas, this one on right has more substituted double bond and is therefore thermodynamically more stable. Ketones can undergo deprotonation with strong bases, like alkoxides, to give enolates. Alkoxides are not as basic as ketone enolates, so the acid-base equilibrium tends to favor the starting ketone. However, they are still strong enough bases to set up an equilibrium between the starting ketone and the two different enolates. The position of that equilibrium will favor the most thermodynamically stable enolate, that is, the most substituted, even though it is slightly slower to form, due to the fact that, the CH bond is more sterically hindered. For that reason, we call the more substituted enolate, the thermodynamic enolate, because of its greater stability. We also say that, formation of this enolate is under thermodynamic control. We can depict the formation of these enolates in an energy diagram. The kinetic enolate has lower energy barrier, due to less steric hindrance of H, and is therefore formed faster. The thermodynamic enolate has comparatively higher energy barrier, due to greater steric hindrance of H, and is therefore formed slowly. The difference in energy, del E, determines equilibrium ratio of enolates. In this case, the energy difference is typically 1 to 2 kilocalories per mole. These thermodynamic enolates can act as nucleophiles in various reactions. Anytime we form an enolate under thermodynamic control, we should expect that the major product will arise from the reaction of the more substituted enolate with the electrophile, such as in this halogenation reaction. The major product in this aldol reaction is through thermodynamic enolate. The thermodynamic enolate, though formed slowly, is more stable and is therefore ultimately favored at equilibrium. The less substituted kinetic enolate is not favored at equilibrium, hence kinetic product is formed in minor quantity. In this alkylation reaction, under the given reaction conditions, the major product is through thermodynamic enolate. The less substituted kinetic enolate is not favored at equilibrium, hence kinetic product is formed in minor quantity. Similarly, the major product in this conjugate addition is also through thermodynamic enolate. All these reactions are said to be proceeding under thermodynamic control. Now a reasonable question remains. Can kinetic enolate be formed, even though it is thermodynamically less stable? To understand this, consider again the unsymmetrical ketone, 2-methylcyclohexanone. 
The base encounters no or less steric hindrance for deprotonation of less substituted alpha proton. Whereas, the removal of proton from more substituted alpha position is hindered by steric hindrance. Thus, deprotonation of less substituted proton is easier, whereas deprotonation of more substituted proton is comparatively difficult. Hence, the former process is faster and the later is slower. Thus, the kinetic enolate can be selectively formed if we use a sterically hindered base for deprotonation. A good choice for this is the strong bulky base, lithium diisopropyl amide, LDA. LDA has two big and bulky isopropyl groups, flanking a very basic amide base, and deprotonating a ketone alpha carbon is no problem for LDA. LDA is so strong that deprotonation can happen at extremely low temperature. So, when our ketone is treated with LDA at low temperature, we get preferential formation of the less substituted enolate. We call this kinetic control. We call the less substituted enolate the kinetic enolate because we are depending on the difference in reaction rates to give us selectivity. Also, unlike alkoxide bases, deprotonation goes to completion. So long as an excess of base is used, there is no equilibrium between the different enolates. Kinetic enolates can be used for the same reactions of enolates we've seen previously, such as alkylation, the elbow reaction, and halogenation. In each case we are forming our new bond at the less substituted alpha carbon of the ketone. Thus during alkylation in the presence of LDA, kinetic product will be the only product, because in the presence of LDA, equilibrium between different enolates is not established and only kinetic enolate is formed. Similarly in this aldol reaction, the kinetic product will be formed. The new CC bond will be formed between less substituted end of enolate and carbonyl carbon of aldehyde. Similarly, bromination of this ketone in the presence of LDA will preferentially give kinetic product. Enolates result from the removal of a proton on the carbon adjacent to a carbonyl, the alpha carbon. They are stable due to inductive effects, but more importantly, due to the delocalization via resonance of the lone pair on carbon to more electronegative oxygen. Aldehydes and ketones without a CH bond on the alpha carbon are called non-enolizable since they lack an acidic proton. Enolates are flat and can be thought of similar to alkenes in having C-C pi bond. Base catalyzed ketoenol tautomerism of aldehydes and ketones goes through an enolate. Enolates are nucleophiles and react with halogens, aldehydes and ketones, and alkyl halides. Enolates with two electron withdrawing groups attached to the alpha carbon are particularly easy to form. Enolates of esters and amides are more difficult to form than enolates of aldehydes and ketones. Unsymmetrical ketones are capable of forming two different enolates. With a strong base, such as sodium hydroxide or sodium alkoxide, the tendency is to form the more substituted enolate, because alkene stability increases with substitution. This is called thermodynamic enolate. This tendency can be overcome by using a strong sterically hindered base, like lithium diisopropyl amide, LDA, which forms the kinetic enolate preferentially.